Good morning, good afternoon, good night, beautiful people. I'm Max, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video as people seem to have enjoyed the last ones. I'm taking your feedback in trying to talk slower, but I'm not changing the way I pronounce book. It's book, it's not book, okay? For the few people who said that. Anyway, so the Bretty Sinalis video didn't do as well as I wanted it to, but I'm not surprised. But seriously, thank you guys if you watched that. Thank you, everyone. I know I don't get great views, but thank you all for watching anything I put out. It means a lot to me. Recently, I read The Bowel Jar by Sylvia Plath, a book that I've been wanting to read for a very long time, as I even put this in my second video, the books I want to read this year video, so I finally got around to reading it. And I have some thoughts on this book. Sylvia Plath, for those who don't know, but I'm pretty sure most do, was a poet and writer who was alive between 1932 and 1963. Unfortunately, had a very tragic end to her life. I don't think I can actually say the word on YouTube. And I don't want this video getting taken down. But if you know anything about her, you know exactly what I'm talking about and what happened to her. So it's, it's very sad. And nothing in this review that I say that is negative towards the book is negative towards her as a person or disrespectful particularly sort of uh but disrespectful to those struggles or the things they've got people have gone through like that that is not at all what this this video is this isn't a critique of that this is a critique of the book and the characters well the people in the book for those who don't know the bell jar was published in 1963 it is plus only novel and it was written as a roman a clef as the french say it i'm probably pronouncing it wrong that's basically when you write something that's a true story it's a real book but all the names are changed and details can be embellished. The most famous Romana Clef book is probably Jack Kerouac's On the Road. The Bell Jar is no different in that sort of respect. It's about Esther Greenwood, a 19-year-old intern at a magazine company. Greenwood is Sylvia Plath, that's who she is and she's a stand-in for, and various other people in the story are various other people who she really interacted with, including her mother and so on. So the Bell Jar... It's beautifully written. Let's start with the positives. It's a beautifully written book. The writing is excellent, and Plath very clearly was a very talented writer. I feel like the people who imitate her definitely come off as those purple prose types, but I think the original Bell Jar is well written, and it very much feels lived in. You can sort of understand what's really going on there. The problem is, with the Bell Jar, uh, it's kind of really unlikable. This book is not a likeable book, and I don't mean this in a way of it's got a Molly Gray anti-hero or it's disturbing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Esther Greenwood is intensely dislikable as a protagonist. I understand she was based on Plath, so no disrespect, of course, there. But I feel people don't talk about how maybe Plath wasn't that nice of a person. Controversial, I know. But essentially, Greenwood is just not nice. She spends most of the time in the early chapters before her mental health starts to seriously decline, just complaining about everyone and everything in the most menial way. And it kind of continues. It's basically as if she didn't realise that her being mentally ill isn't an excuse for her being a bad person. You can be mentally ill, but that doesn't mean you're allowed to be a dick. You still kind of have to be a normal person who respects people. Greenwood is not that at all. In the first 22 pages, and I know that number because I've mentioned it when I read it, there are like two racist remarks. This isn't a book from 1910. This isn't a book written about a racist character or one of those books that's written where the character isn't the author. The author and the character are the same thing. You can't separate them. That's the problem with this book. Plath evidently held these racist views and very outdated views for the time. Like I say, this was published in 1963. This was written in the early 1960s. That's the civil rights era. This isn't 1910, where I understand it a bit more. This was where people were starting to realize, hey, maybe racism is quite bad on a major scale. Something that I find quite strange that Plath still chooses to retain those views. And not just that, she just isn't very nice and just kind of complains about everyone. There's a part very early on in the book where she's complaining about short guys, which is like the most random of things to complain about. Like, 
Why? What did they even do to you? I understand you're five foot ten or whatever, but like, what did a short dude, five foot six dude, ever do to you? It's so unnecessary and kind of egotistical in the book in a way to just be so. Oh, I'm better than you, and I know more than you, and I can complain and whatever. But that's the impression that I got from reading this book. It doesn't help the fact that most fans I've ever known of this book are the exact same in real life. Especially people that I can see in a more negative light now they're not a main part of my life. People who I think personally aren't nice people. Usually very arrogant, unlikable, stubborn, and probably quite misandrist people who try and use their mental issues as an excuse to push people away and be aggressive or angry or complain about people, yet then complain that they've got nobody. I understand that mental illness is a very complex issue. I'm not saying, and I'm not pretending I don't know what it's like, but there are different people and different ways people deal with those things. I know plenty of people who are severely mentally ill and do accidentally do those things, but they don't do it as a conscious choice. I know mentally ill people who do it as a conscious choice and don't take any responsibility or blame because they're mentally ill and that's some kind of defense mechanism. It's the sort of people who relate to Bojack Horseman that show it's that kind of thing where people don't see in that show at least that bojack is from what i can tell meant to be an asshole they're like oh it's okay that i'm an asshole because i'm depressed it's like it's not okay to be an asshole for you <laughs> for, for mental illness stuff which is the problem is most people i know who love the bell jar fall directly into that category it's uncanny how much of a resemblance esther greenwood has to those people that i've known who love the bell jar I'm going to compare it to two different books. Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami and My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Mosfeg. I believe I'm saying that right. This is interesting, actually, because my friend Tom, shout out Tom, compared The Bell Jar and Norwegian Wood, two books he both liked and had positive opinions of for his university, which I think is quite interesting how I'm using it to showcase something bad about both books. In Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood, the protagonist is not a nice person. He's rude, he's mean, he's misogynistic, he's very objectifying, and all this without a single trace or hint of irony or self-awareness. It isn't a character the author is critiquing, and it isn't a character that the author is stepping back and saying, although I hold these views, or held these views, maybe this isn't what I should have been doing. Instead, the character blindly walks through that book, acting as if they're doing the best thing in every situation when they're really not, and I got no self-awareness out of it. My Year of Rest and Relaxation, on the other hand, is a very similar book. It's about a pretty unlikable, spoilt, rich girl, attractive, tall character, whatever, who is not a nice person particularly, and she's very full of herself. In My Year of Rest and Relaxation, the main character is not a Tessa Mosfeg. The main character is hilarious in a way she is so obviously written to be a pretentious hipster. There's some passages in that book which are so funny because they very clearly are self-aware. She isn't writing as though that is her. She's writing as though that's a character. Another example could be Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Of course, Holden Caulfield's got elements of J.D. Salinger, but he isn't writing it about him. He isn't the character. Sylvia Plath is the character in The Bell Jar, even more so than Norwegian Wood. But the point is, Norwegian Wood and The Bell Jar are both books about characters who are meant to be likeable, and the authors who are really bad people, or at least unlikable. And I think that kind of has a similar thing there. I don't have any issue with morally grey protagonists, or unlikable protagonists. Like I say, Mayor of Resting Relaxation and Capture on the Rye. Neither of those protagonists are particularly nice people. But there's a detachment from the author that makes it easy to read those. The Bell Jar, you are literally reading the story of Sylvia Plath. So you can't sit back and think, oh, maybe this is a character study, because it's not really. It's a lie story. It's almost a memoir. And I think that's the problem. I don't mean to offend anybody who loves The Bell Jar, but I did not enjoy the book. I, on Goodreads, in can description, gave it a 2 out of 5 stars, which is roughly a 3 or 4 out of 10, because Goodreads don't do half-starring. So, it's very well written, but the main character reminds me of every single insufferable ED Twitter, 
uh, Red Scare Dasher wannabe person that loves this sort of that loves themselves and is so full of themselves, and I think everybody else is on some lower level than them. The Bell Jar is physically unable to be read by me without me thinking of those people that I intensely dislike that I've known who are those sorts of people. That's the problem. It's one of those books, just in a way that when you watch a certain piece of media that is so intrinsically linked to male misogynistic Sigma losers, you sort of feel the same way. But at least with Taxi Driver, Travis Bickle isn't literally Paul Schrader in Martin Scorsese's story. Esther Greenwood is literally Sylvia Plath. It's not all completely bad. It's a very nicely written book. Her writing is very good. You get a great, vivid description of everything. And I love it. Compare it to Norwegian Wood, where it's overwritten to the point of being insufferably full of itself. The Bell Jar isn't actually like that. Writing style, it's kind of like her trying to do a Vladimir Nabokov. Not as good as Nabokov, because she's not as good a storyteller as Nabokov. And the characters aren't as interesting. There's no example. Lolita, you're not meant to root for him, but that's the point. But I enjoyed it in a way that I think Vladimir Nabokov's books are very well written. The Bell Jar is a nicely well written book. And I do think it's worth reading. As I'll say on this channel many, many times, don't let me decide your opinion of the book. Do whatever you want to do, read the book and get your own opinion, because you might feel differently. I don't hate The Bell Jar. I don't think it's a dreadful book. It wouldn't go on a pile of the bottom of the bottom, but I don't like it. I don't like it because it reminds me of real people who exist, just in the way plenty of people don't like, say, Catcher in the Rye or the writings of Jack Kerouac. So many people I know, mainly girls, know so many, you know, dislike these books because they know, like, misogynistic losers who want to be those book characters or whatever, or that show similarities. It's the same thing with The Bell Jar. That's why I don't like it. It just reminds me of people I don't like. And I feel like if there's any book which is so unself-aware and so full of itself in that regard, it's The Bell Jar. So, what did you think about the ball jar? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Shout at me in the comments for getting it wrong. Or praise me for getting it right. I like these sort of short form video book reviews. Right? It's sort of me rambling about a recent read. So, if you enjoyed that too, make sure to subscribe and stick around. The channel is only growing. Until then, I've been Max. Stay beautiful.